This no fuss cheesecake recipe makes a beautiful presentation. It is gloriously creamy. Mm. Oh my goodness. And it's supposed to look burnt. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is for a cheesecake, but not any ordinary cheesecake. This one's a little unusual because it is called a burnt cheesecake or a Basque cheesecake. And the difference between this and a regular cheesecake is usually we're going to cook a cheesecake in a uh, like a water bath, which is called a bain-marie, or using steam, some kind of moist heat. And we bake it for a long time on lower temperatures. So it's a really nice texture and you know what we typically eat is cheesecake. Well, the difference with the burnt or Basque cheesecake is it's baked at a high dry temperature, so a higher temperature, dry oven, and it gets this golden brown top and sides, and it's crustless. It is the easiest thing in the world to make, so let's get right into it, okay? All right, I'm using my stand mixer. You can use a hand mixer, but it is very important that you stay on low speeds. I cannot stress that enough. Do not rush this process. It, it doesn't take that long anyway. Do not whip it, okay? Because I've done that <laughs> several times when I was testing. I was like, well, I'm gonna get some more air in the batter. Silly me, that is not a good idea for any cheesecake ever, but especially not this one. It will not work out. So we're gonna go on the stir mode on my KitchenAid. So level one, low speed mixing only, okay? You're gonna need three packages. Each one is eight ounces of cream cheese, full fat, okay? You need to have the full fat. Don't get the lower fat variety for this and it needs to be room temperature. That's super, super important. So take it out a few hours before you wanna make your cheesecake. We're gonna put all three blocks in now. Lower your uh, stand mixer if you're using it or put your paddles on your electric mixer and lock it in place. You do want the paddle attachment, not the whisk attachment. That's also important because we want the least amount of air into this as possible, so we don't want to whisk it. And then just go on the low speed and start to blend up the cream cheese. Once the cream cheese sort of collects, because it'll start to glump around the paddle, I'll scrape down the side, scrape down the paddle, and then we'll add in the sugar. All right, that's good. And again, we're gonna go on low speed. And I just stream in three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. Once all the sugar has uh, combined with the cream cheese, we're gonna add one egg at a time. I have three large eggs here in total. It's about three quarters of a cup, okay? So in case your eggs run a little different sizes, which mine do, because I have backyard hens, so uh, I also go by cups sometimes, so it's three quarters of a cup. Mix until the egg is just incorporated, and then we'll add the second and the third and do the same thing. Okay, once the third egg is incorporated, scrape down the sides, then we're gonna add in a half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt or kosher salt, either one's fine. If you're gonna use table salt, just use about a quarter of a teaspoon. So we really want all the cream cheese to be super smooth. So we're not quite there yet. So give the bowl a nice scrape and then we will mix our salt and flour into the mixture. There's three tablespoons of all-purpose flour in this recipe. 
Uh, I don't advise skipping it because it does provide structure. You're gonna see when we pour the batter into the prepared cake pan, how runny it is. So the flour in this recipe is important. Half a teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of flour, Some people mix their flour with their heavy cream before adding it in. I've never had it lump up or cause any issues. I just dump it straight in. But if you prefer, you could whisk it into your heavy cream. You're gonna need three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and heavy cream is important. I've tried to make the recipe with milk. It does not turn out. So don't substitute it. You need heavy whipping cream. All right, we're gonna scrape the bowl down again and we're gonna add in vanilla paste. I'm using paste, but you could absolutely use extract. You would use the same amount. I like mine to have a really nice vanilla flavor, so I use a full tablespoon. And this is homemade vanilla paste, and you can get that recipe on my website. It is super easy. It takes, I don't know, like five minutes to make. You just need some fresh vanilla beans and a few other ingredients. And it really, it's, it's fantastic. Oh, the beautiful specks of vanilla bean. Oh, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, heavy cream, I just stream that in and then we will get it all mixed up. But I do wanna wait until a few more of these lumps go away. So you, it's okay to have a few little lumps. That's pretty typical in the batter, but you don't want it super lumpy, okay? Because this is a really smooth, creamy texture of a cheesecake. It is light, it is not dense at all. So we want it to be lump free as possible. All right, that looks good. Now it's time to add in the cream. I just stream it straight in with the mixer on. All right, that looks good. Now let me show you the consistency. I'm gonna take the paddle off here for a minute. So you can see the consistency because it is different from a regular cheesecake batter. It is much looser. All right, so see that? So it's a little bit thicker than pancake batter, um, but not too much, okay? so. That's the consistency you want. Now let me clean up and we are gonna prepare our cake pan because this is crustless so we don't need to worry about uh, putting in any kind of a graham cracker or cookie crust. We're just gonna use some parchment and line a cake pan. All right, so you're gonna want an eight inch springform pan or push bottom springform, which is what I'm using, or you can use a regular eight inch cake pan. It does not matter for this recipe, okay? Um, so you, it's not necessary to have a spring form pan. So an eight inch regular fat daddy or any other kind of uh, pan will work fine. I do recommend using a lighter colored pan uh, just so the edges don't get too, too dark. Uh, but if you wanna use a dark colored pan, you can do that. Still go on 425 because that's really important for the correct color and texture of the top and flavor, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, of the top of the cheesecake and the sides, but you may not need to bake it as long, okay? So definitely pay attention to that if you're using dark pans. You need a large piece of parchment paper, okay? I didn't measure this, but usually what I do is set it over the pan that I'm using and make sure that I go about halfway uh, longer. So see, cut the pan in half, make sure I've got half on both sides or another way to think about it is double the width of the cake pan then you're going to take it trust me on this one you want to do this and crumble it all up don't wet it or anything like that we don't want it wet for this recipe Not only does this help you tremendously get it into the pan correctly, it also creates a beautiful design on the outside edges of your cheesecake. 
and then just push it in. Be careful not to tear it, okay? If you do tear it, you're going to want to get a new piece. So push it in. You are not going to be able to get it to where it's smooth. You don't want it smooth, okay? It doesn't need to be smooth. So I spent probably an hour trying to get smooth edges and it's not worth it. It doesn't help anything. So don't aggravate yourself. Just push it in. You're going to have some coming up over the edge. That will help you if you're using an eight inch pan uh, without a push bottom. It will help you get it out at the end. So don't trim it off too much. Just fold it over, okay? What I try to avoid are big creases. And let me show you what I mean by big crease. So like that, okay? So where it's a big pocket, a big crease. The reason being is that your cheesecake batter will kind of go in there and then it just bakes a little funny. So I do try to avoid those. And I just pull up to get them to sort of release. And it's fine, it's very easy to do. So if you spend more than three minutes putting your parchment in your pan, you are overthinking it, my friend. Don't do it. There we go, that's it. Now we're gonna layer the cheesecake. So I've done this several different ways. I have done three layers, meaning that I put a layer down on the bottom of the cheesecake, layer of the blueberries, which I'll get into what blueberries I'm using in just a second, layer of the mix again, the batter, then more blueberries, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, it was more work and it didn't result in a, in a better looking cheesecake or a better tasting cheesecake. So now what I do is there's four cups of batter total. I put about three, between two and a half and three cups in the bottom. And then I go around the edges, but not, not too close to the edge and not directly in the center. Go around the edges with a scoop of blueberries, okay? And what'll happen is as it bakes, those blueberries sort of stay, they kind of settle right in the middle of the cheesecake and it looks beautiful and it tastes beautiful, but the cheesecake will still hold together because the blueberries don't go all the way to the center and don't come all the way to the outer crust, okay? So about three cups in and then we'll put our blueberries in. and then spread it out so it's even. Okay, so the blueberry pie filling. Yes, you can use the kind in the can. However, I recommend making your own. It only takes about five minutes. You can use fresh or frozen blueberries. You control the amount of sugar. Mine is not super sweet. It is absolutely delicious. And it's so easy to make on the stove. You just boil the blueberries with some sugar, add in a little cornstarch, give it a stir, and then chill it and you're ready to go. Okay, so now I have about one and a half cups, which is half of a batch of my recipe of the blueberry pie filling, but I don't really measure this. I just use what I think I wanna use, and then I save the rest for the top, okay? So I just go right around here. We don't want too much because you don't wanna take away from the flavor and the texture of the cheesecake. We just wanna add a little interest to it. And this does, it, it's so delicious. If you wanted to make a regular, just a Basque cheesecake without the blueberries, you absolutely can. Just don't do this step. Everything else would remain the same. Or if you wanted to use another kind of fruit, you could. All right, that looks good. So a ring of blueberries and then the rest of the batter. Now I scoop on the rest of the batter because I like to make sure it gets over every part. And if you pour it on, sometimes you can sink those blueberries down into the cake batter. All right, that looks great. Now you can gently smooth the top. Some people um, bang them on their countertop. I do not do that because you're gonna bang your blueberries down to the bottom. Um, they bang it so that there's no air bubbles. 
you have any of your parchment that's sticking out, you can just press it back in. But usually the weight of the cheesecake batter will do that for you. And that looks absolutely perfect. And now it goes into the oven. It's very important that the oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And it took my oven almost the entire time that it took to make this to preheat. So I recommend preheating when you first start making the recipe. All right, now we're just gonna pop it into the oven and it will bake for 40 minutes. Every oven is a little bit different, okay? So mine is gonna be in there at 425 for 40 minutes, unless I see that the top is getting too brown. Then I may lower the temperature. That is what I encourage you to do when you're making it for the first time in your oven because your oven may heat differently. If your oven has a hot spot, which many ovens do, you may need to rotate your pan around during the baking process. So this is not something that I recommend you just pop into the oven and you go run some errands or, or do some housework or something like that. The first time you make it, pay attention, keep an eye, don't open the oven door, but turn your oven light on to take a peek at it, okay? And then make adjustments as you see the different changes happening. If your top does not start to brown within about 15 minutes of the bake time, your temperature's too low, so you're gonna want to bump that up a little bit. All right, here we go. Oh, and also, I should mention, put it on the middle rack of your oven. It is beautiful. All right, now it is perfectly normal for the center to kind of collapse, okay? That is normal. It's gonna happen at any time now. So don't freak out about that. You can expect it to happen. One thing that I do to sort of reduce that a little bit is I turn my oven off after the 40 minutes of bake time and then I set a five minute timer and I open the door. So the oven temperature is gradually going down, not shockingly like pulling the cake uh, right out of the oven and shockingly changing the temperature. And I found that that has decreased the amount of sink, so to speak, but it's totally optional. You don't have to do that. Um, and I've also found that that's a perfect sweet spot for the texture of the cheesecake that I'm going for. Now, another thing, it will be very wobbly when you bring it out, okay? It's gonna seem like it's not cooked at all and it's real wobbly, that is perfectly normal. What you wanna do now is leave it on your counter on a cooling rack so that air can circulate all around it and let it cool here for about 90 minutes. Then you're gonna put it in the refrigerator for at least six to eight hours. I usually just do it overnight. So my blueberry bass cheesecake chilled in the refrigerator overnight. Now it is time to take it out of the pan. And I did wanna mention that when you refrigerate it, make sure you refrigerate it uncovered. You don't want any condensation to form and then drip back down onto the top of your uh, pie, so, or cake, whatever you wanna call it. So uh, definitely uncovered. And also refrigerate it in the pan that you baked it in. If you try to take it out of the pan to refrigerate, you're gonna end up with it falling apart because remember, it's not fully set until after it chills. All right, so this one is a push bottom instead of a clamp kind of spring form. But if you were, so for me, I just push it up like that. But if you were using a regular pie pan, what I recommend doing is just grabbing the parchment and pulling it right out, just like that. Okay, so super easy. So no special pans, no special spring form pan is needed. Okay, so a lot of people like to serve this right in the parchment by just taking down the sides like this and just serving it because it looks so rustic. That is totally up to you. Or you can remove it and put it onto a platter. That's fine, whatever you want. I think so you can see, so the parchment doesn't get in the way. I think what I'm gonna do is move it to my cutting board for you. So I'm gonna go underneath here. All right, let's see if I can get this totally off. I still have my little plate thing under there. 
Okay, I'm gonna be brave. Oh boy. I'm, I'm really playing with fire here. But it's working. I'm making a little bit of a mess, but there you go. Okay. All right. First, let me point out. So see how it's, it's definitely sunk in here in the middle. That is completely normal. Like I said earlier in the video, but it's also a perfect place to put some kind of a decoration, whether that be whipped cream or like in this instance, because it's a blueberry Basque cheesecake, I'm gonna put some blueberries right here in the center. This is the blueberry pie filling um, that I made for the inside of the cheesecake. And the only thing I did was warm it up a little bit and add a little bit of water because after it sat overnight, it was just a little thicker than I wanted. So now it's a nice consistency for the top of the cheesecake. And that took like a minute to do. Okay, here we go. We're gonna cut it. Oh, this is the moment of truth. Have a sharp knife or a slicing knife or a pie knife, whatever, whatever you wanna use. And I like to have a paper towel. You can have it a little bit damp if you want. And that way you can clean off your knife in between each slice if you care to get really clean, precise slices. You know, depends on if that's important to you or not. Okay, let's go. Slice straight through and pull straight out, and then wipe off. And the first slice is always the hardest, right? Slice straight down, pull straight out, and oh, here we go. Let me try to do this so you can see it, right? Let's just move the whole thing around. This is so beautiful. I just can't get over how gorgeous this is. I mean, I just think it's oh, amazing so easy. All right, there we go. Our blueberry basque cheesecake with a little blueberry in the center. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Oh, and also I'll share with you, each and every time the blueberries in the center look a little different, it doesn't matter. It always tastes good. And so let me explain the, the differences in the texture of this. It is almost like custard-like, okay? So the cheesecake is, it's not overly sweet, but it is so smooth. Mm. It is so good. I think this is my favorite version of a cheesecake, is this Basque cheesecake. So much flavor from the top. It's like got this nutty caramel type of flavor to it. Just, it adds another dimension. It's so delicious. Mm. 